Hi, everyone. I hope that we don't have any insulin problems after the lunch, so let's see. Um, so my name is Susanna, and I spent the last couple of years trying to grow our business at GetApp, which is today a Gartner company, together with Coptera and Software Advice. We've been all acquired pretty much for uh, 2014 and 2016, and we formed a new business unit called Gartner Digital Markets. Uh, we are all bootstrap companies. Some of us are dating back to 1999, and it took us some time to figure out how we're going to get our leads. But also, it's our core business, helping people with pay-per-click advertising. So essentially, what I want to do here today, I want to share data that we gathered over the years. I'm sorry, I have a problem with a clicker. Great. Uh, that we gathered over the years, working with 30,000 software vendors, and also doing free lead generation. So we've got a massive amount of data on how to optimize pay-per-click. There are some optimization tips that are very easy to deploy, and they, they are certainly valuable for companies at the very beginning of their stage, through to companies that have it dialed in, but they can still optimize something. So without further ado, what I want to do, I'll go very briefly through what is lead generation, and then I'll focus on pay-per-click so that we can share our experience, really. So on a very high level, obviously, we've got inbound and outbound. Looking at inbound, we sort of laying out a trail of, let's say, content or pieces so that companies can come back to us and obviously sign up for whatever product we have. And I'll start looking at SEO, which is probably what everyone is familiar with. This is how we all start, is the organic, non-paid exposure in uh, search results. Uh, which is great. It works for a lot of companies for a really long time, but from a long-term perspective, it's not really a strategy. I always say that it's more of a hope because we don't have control over a lot of portion of the organic results. So some other types of inbound, obviously we have content marketing, which is great. Again, it works short and midterm fairly well, but it's not really scalable in the long term. We've got integrations with other applications that can bring you more leads. Um, but then at some point when it's really time to grow and scale, we will all probably start looking into paid lead acquisition methods. So we've got obviously SEM that can be done We've got Google AdWords, we've got Bing and Yahoo, we've got on social media, biggest probably being Facebook as a channel, LinkedIn, Twitter, and then we have the marketplaces. So it can be Gartner Digital Markets, one of the companies over there, or any of our competitors. So I'll really talk about pay-per-click because this is where we gather most of the data and what we try to optimize on a daily basis. Uh, we see, uh, just to kind of introduce what is pay-per-click, so with pay-per-click, you literally pay for a click to come to your homepage, but uh, in the better scenario, you want to get the click to the free trial or free demo, in other words, sign-up page, where it can obviously convert into a prospective customer. So why is pay-per-click so good to scale up your business? It really is good for anyone who's got, let's say, reasonable pricing. If you freemium or you have pricing of you know, $10 per click, for, oh, sorry, $10 uh, per month for your product, then maybe you're not going to get the best return on investment and you're better off focusing on some of the organic searches. So looking at the first thing, you really can get targeted and qualified traffic. It's very fast. The moment you start paying for clicks on Google AdWords or wherever it is, the traffic is flowing and you obviously gather it. Very easy to measure the results. You've got complete visibility into how many clicks I paid for, how many free trials or demos I got, and how many of these leads became my customers. Most platforms will allow you to put down some cap, either a monthly cap or a daily cap. In other words, very easy to control the budget that you have. And in terms of controlling your internal investment, that is also very easy because you obviously 
should know what's the lifetime value, what's the cost per lead that you're looking at, but I'm going to get to that later. One thing that I want to say about the return on investment, we see very often that I don't want to say the mistakes company makes, but people expect results immediately. So with any pay-per-click pay campaign, it's a matter of volume and it's a matter of optimization. So for example, if you say, I've got 100 clicks that I want to try on Google AdWords, you have to consider what's the uh, typical conversion rate on AdWords. So for example, let's say it's 3%. Some of the marketplaces, they're going to claim 6 to 9% conversion. And let me specify that the conversion is from the click to the free trial or demo. So if you selected 100 clicks, or this is your test sample, and you're getting a conservative conversion of 6%, then out of those 100 clicks, you probably get six customers. The question is whether this is a valuable or big enough sample to evaluate if it works. Absolutely not, statistically. And even more so, if let's say that you're in a CRM or project management category with your software, HR, learning management, you name it, some of the really big and popular spaces where the click volumes are really high. Uh, you can get thousands of clicks per day, and if your sample volume is 100 clicks and they get allocated very fast, then obviously you've been live on a platform for let's say a matter of days, and you have no idea how, for example, the traffic differs throughout the month. So basically, or generally speaking, the recommended test for a pay-per-click is a minimum of 500 to 1,000 clicks to really evaluate if this can work or not. The other thing with pay-per-click is that it gives you a high search exposure. Obviously, if you're paying for traffic on AdWords, you know, much higher, but also through a lot of the marketplaces, you're going to be in the top organic results. And because a lot of the marketplaces, they will pay for traffic probably more than you can afford for your company, you're going to be higher on the organic search if you go through one of those channels, for example. So let me dive into what we need to really optimize pay-per-click. First thing, define an audience. It sounds very simple. Um, we see with a lot of companies at a very early stage that it is not that easy. You want to go granular. You really want to think about the industry, the company size, uh, the segment, the function role that you're targeting. Focusing on suitable channels, just a very simplistic example, but we advise on that all the time. If you go in a market and you want to focus on enterprise level companies, probably trying to advertise on Facebook is not going to be the best option. Big thing is targeting the right geographies. I'll tell you what I mean. So looking at the latest Google data, we know that four out of five software related searches today globally are happening outside of the United States. What we hear very often, especially EMEA-based companies or Euro-based companies, they say, yeah, but my only target market is the United States. If you target in the United States and your software is in English, that means that you can absolutely target, as a minimum, the other English-speaking geographies. So the way how to go about that with PPC is not to limit the geographies where you, where you target, but to do it with a bid price. So a lot of the platforms, they have auction-based bidding, and you obviously bid on a position, and you can do it across geographies. So for example, if US is your target market, or the predominant one, have higher bids, but cast a wide net, and make sure that in those countries where maybe you're not focusing, you have much lower bids, but you're still present. The last thing, sort of like fine-tune the very first steps of pay-per-click, is having a compelling copy on your site. There are plenty of uh, some free tools, uh, obviously Google Keyword Planner, you can see what is trending, but make sure that you mention those keywords on the landing pages. I just said a landing page, so these are the free tips that I really wanted to share uh, based on the data that we gather, and the free tips that if you implement it today, they will have impact on how you do paid lead generation. First thing, landing pages. So landing page is the page where the paid traffic lands. It can be your home page, but more often it's going to be your free child page or your demo page. We've been running for some time a free landing page design service, and what we've seen 
is a free, per, fr free fold increase in conversion rates to trial and demo on optimized landing pages. And I'm going to go into details. I'll actually walk you through actual case studies of what is a non-optimized versus optimized landing page. This is a very average number. There are some incredible results where you take non-optimized page conversion rates of, let's say, 5% to 25% and higher. And that obviously directly impacts what you get out of that. So dive in into an example. This is an original landing page of a digital signage software. Like the first question that, that I would throw out, if I land on that page as a potential end user, how do I know what to do? I probably understand what it does, but can I sign up for anything? Like I came to that page because I'm interested in that software and it's not telling me if I can get a demo or a free trial. So this is how a redesigned landing page would look like. Going through the elements, we've got a very powerful and bold tagline telling me immediately what it is. I have a very topical background image that obviously corresponds to, to what the software does. Everything is happening because you want to make sure that you lead the end user to the sign up. The copy just highlighting the biggest competitive points that this application has over someone else, for example. But the biggest thing here is the color differentiated button telling me as an end user, hey, you can sign up for a free demo. So super simplistic, but we see companies not do this all the time. The other important thing, obviously, we highlighting who are current customers. We want to create more credibility. But also, as I'm saying in the title, we are currently looking above the fold. Why is this important? So you're paying for traffic, and uh, once it lands on your page, think about the user journey. Someone searches for something on one of the search engines. They might go through reviews platforms. They might look at some of the marketplaces. Essentially, what I'm saying, they spend time learning something about you. And at this moment, they just want to sign up. Make it easy for them. So when they come to your page, you're not asking them to scroll <coughs> down to the bottom of the page where you have the form. You want to do it above the fold. They see it immediately. But let's, let's have a look at what happens below the fold. This is the place where you want to have additional information about the business. So on the left-hand side, we've got the original version. Right-hand side, we've got the redesigned version. So you can see that. The information, in this case, are the same. They're just presented differently. So again, we hand-holding the end user to have it easier to understand what this is about, and we are adding the call to action differentiated in bright color or differentiated in other color than your brand colors again. And then moving to the bottom, again, we're still below the fold. We are obviously want to display reviews. You all have happy customers. Show it to the prospective customers. And if you're getting reviews on any platform it might be, make sure that you grab the batch and put it on that page so that you, again, create credibility with the prospective user. One thing that I also wanted to say, so just got talking to, uh, to Google last week, they were uh, releasing figures on uh, Q2 2017 versus Q2 2016 mobile use. 21% increase over the year. If you do not have a mobile responsive page, at some point, probably very soon, it's going to become a bit of a problem. So talking about reviews, I'm moving on to the second point, how to make sure that you're optimizing for pay-per-click or any paid lead generation. <coughs> the, the figure of 91% telling us that customers really trust online reviews is not surprising. What has been surprising to us are the numbers that we've been able to gather because we run free reviews programs for anyone who is in the B2B software world. And finally, we'll be able to quantify the impact of reviews. And what we see that the review software gets 67% more traffic than those without reviews, but crucially, they actually they see 75% more leads. So how do you get reviews? Uh, there are plenty of companies that I talked to today that have spectacular programs, 
and there is nothing that, that I could potentially advise them to do better, but there are also plenty of companies that maybe do not have the bandwidth. So at least reach out to your happy customers and do it periodically. The data that we have show that if a review is older than three months, people really don't pay that much attention. They think it's obsolete. Do it periodically. You don't have to incentivize them. I'm pretty sure that you can find a few guys, a few users every two, three months that will be happy to leave a review for you. So moving on to the third and really the most important point on how to optimize your paid lead gen, it's tracking. Sounds super simple. We all do it in some shape or form. But I will try to highlight some of the, some of the problems that we see with that. So first thing, having visibility into the funnel in the sense that you really want to know what is happening with the lead when it lands on your platform, where it is coming from, what you do with that lead from a sales and marketing perspective throughout the journey, and most importantly, how many of these leads you close. Obviously, here we're just talking about generating leads. You need to close them into paid customers at some point. So you've got various attribution models. The only point that I want to make about that, it doesn't matter what you pick. First click, last click attribution, multi-channel attribution, which should be the default if you really want to have a visibility on which channels influence the other ones that you're using. It doesn't matter what you go for, but make sure that you stick to it for consistency, especially if you're evaluating one channel so that you don't end up with very skewed results. The third point is a very difficult one. Uh, we see as we work with companies through all the growth stages that especially at the very beginning, when we ask people, do you know what is your lifetime value? Do you know how much you want to spend to acquire the free trial? You, you might not have those metrics. If you have 20 customers, maybe not even that. Maybe you don't even have a sales team at the moment and it's been very organic. You don't really know what it is. You didn't have any churn, for example. So it's very important, for example, to look at some industry averages and really play it by the year, but obviously recalculate as you grow and as you acquire those customers. I was already talking about collecting statistically significant data, so again, that, that's the example of if you have only 100 clicks and that's all you have, it, it might happen if you're a very early stage company. Don't try to dilute it and go on five channels. At least takes, take, take those 100 clicks and put it on one channel, but be very aware of the fact that this is not statistically significant. So when you're judging that channel then, whatever it might be, keep that in mind, because it doesn't mean that if you didn't get attraction for the first time, maybe it wasn't fully optimized, maybe your landing page wasn't fully optimized. So go back to the main points, gather some reviews, work on the landing page, the most important things, and come back, probably with a bigger click sample. Last point is uh, obviously there are some companies that are bootstrapped. Some guys are taking uh, money from, uh, from VCs. You'll be always balancing between growth and profit, and it's very much going to be reflected into how aggressive you're going to be in terms of what is your budget, how much you want to bid for positioning, how many different channels you want to have. So always think about it, and again, keep recalculating the numbers. What I want to do here, I want to look at a uh, very specific CRM, SaaS application, and a case study of the profitability of a pay-per-click model, and we're going to be tying it back to the lifetime value of this company. So this is an actual customer who's spending around $3,000 a month, for which they get 400 clicks, and they decided to be fairly aggressive with the bid, and they're paying $7.50 per click. Just to give you a perspective about what's, uh, what's this click volume of 400, CRM is obviously one of the most populated categories. And for example, like we're delivering somewhere around 15,000 clicks to the biggest, to, or to the highest bidder in this category. So this is a fairly small sample. Out of those 400 clicks, they get 24 signups for their free trial. So if we just run the calculation, we're going to end up with $125 to acquire a free trial sign-up. Now, we know that this company has a $1,200 lifetime value. They've been around for some time. Lifetime value has been stable. And they decided to spend 10% of the lifetime value to acquire the free trial. 
So to give you some ideas about what is 10% if this is aggressive or very conservative, again, we're talking, we're talking again about, am I bootstrapped? Do I have some VC money that will very much play into that? If you're really scaling up and you're pushing you know, for acquiring as many customers as you potentially can, then we see companies being as aggressive as investing 50% of their lifetime value into acquiring the free trial. If you're super bootstrapped and you have to be very cautious, maybe you're going to do 5%. But, so what do we end up with? Their desired cost split for the free trial is $120, and they're getting that lead at $125. So we're very much within the realms of profitability. What have to be said here is, again, let me emphasize that you just acquired a lead. This is not a paid customer. So what most uh, paid legion sources will do, they will generate a leads, but then it's totally up to you to convert them. So if I was to really sum up what's, what's the recipe for success, you really want to diversify the channels. A really simplistic analogy is if you have a bag of money, some financial assets, you're probably not going to take it and bat it on one horse. And you're going to do exactly the same here. So talking or looking back at the first slide, we've got plenty of uh, both inbound <coughs> and unbound methods how to do lead generation. And as you grow, you're going to have a different mix, but you're going to have many of these ingredients if you want. If you see that something is getting traction, go deep. At the same time, if you see that something is not getting you really the volume you want, but it's profitable, there is absolutely no need to kill it. You always have to know how much money you have available for paid lead generation, and then try to redistribute according to the channels that work very well. Landing pages, the most important success predictor of your outcome with any paid lead generation. Make sure that it really works for you. There are plenty of services today. Some are free. Uh, some are fairly cheap, actually. I'm not going to name the, the software companies here. But uh, you can get a redesigned landing page in less than 10 minutes if you do not have that capability in your team. And it's going to be a complete game changer. Focusing on reducing churn. That's, uh, I think there are many speakers talking about that. So I really want to focus on fine-tuning the sales machine because this is your ability to convert the lead that you paid for into paid client. And there are some fundamental questions here. So first, on a very uh, broad and general level, how good is the communication between your marketing team and your sales team? And more specifically, what I mean. So if I have a landing page where the company is only asking for email address, do the marketing team know that maybe the sales folks need a number to call? And if they don't have a number to call, maybe you need a pre-sales resource to populate those leads, right? Uh, at the same time, does marketing understand what is the sales qualified lead? Do you have a marketing automation so that you can nurture the leads based on the stage? What happens if I went to your page today and signed up for your free demo? Are you going to follow up with me immediately? Am I going to get an email? Am I getting a phone call? I'm based in the States, you're based in Europe. Am I, I going to get a phone call in a time zone that is not good for me as a potential customer? So these are very simple things that we often, f that we often see that sort of get forgotten, and they're going to have a massive impact on your ability to close the leads. So if you're spending money, and you already decided not only to spend your money, but your very precious time on lead generation, then also spend the time on fine-tuning your sales so that you can close them. And if you don't end up closing them, don't think that it's the fault of the channel. And uh, last thing, if, uh, if you're tracking and you have it properly set up, great. Uh, you're going to keep growing the business if everything goes fine, and your metrics will change. So keep re-evaluating them as you go because it means that maybe now, 10 months after, uh, after you're acquired, for example, your Series B, you have completely different ability to purchase leads. You can be, for example, much higher or much more visible in certain geographies. You can get much higher volume. If you do not recalculate, you stay where you are, essentially. 
that's about it. I think that the time is up, but uh, does anyone have any question? Okay. No questions? Brilliant. So thank you very much for listening. If you want to know anything, there is a booth, so uh, come and ask. And I think that the next person up is Hanno Renner from Personio, who's going to talk about scaling your HR operations. So thank you very much. Thanks.